Now, I love the fact that I grew up in the 90s. I can't imagine being a kid growing up in today's world. Political correctness has infected everything, and they just don't make music or movies like they used to. And the late 90s were a weird time in rock music. Grunge and alternative rock was on its way out, and it was replaced by this weird mishmash of post-grunge groups like Bush, Better Than Ezra, Days of the New, and more poppy commercial rock like Goo Goo Dolls, Third Eye Blind, and Sugar Ray. And then you had new Metal. Now, when I think of the more memorable parts of my childhood, I think of some of the great teenage comedies, including Can't Hardly Wait and American Pie. And the common bond between these two movies was the rock band Third Eye Blind, who had music featured in both films. Now, Third Eye Blind was huge in the late 90s and had some big singles. But whatever happened to those guys? Now, to say that Third Eye Blind had overnight success would not be true. Band leader and singer Steven Jenkins fine-tuned his craft in the Bay Area during the early to mid-90s before the band found huge success in 1997 with their self-titled debut album. And the band would be formed four years prior by the songwriting duo of Stephen Jenkins and Kevin Cadigan in San Francisco. And Jenkins' influences were pretty eclectic, including Parliament Funkadelic to Joy Division to Cat Stevens. And during his time in college, Jenkins would be diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, which took away a lot of his youthful energy for several years. But once he recovered from that condition, Jenkins turned his attention back to music. But with no label, he along with Cadigan would record a demo of songs with other local musicians. But the problem was that the demo didn't really fit in with what was popular on rock radio at the time, but it would be luck that truly helped the band out. A close friend of the band became their manager and they met engineers David Gleason and Eric Dodd who agreed to work with the group on their songs. And at one point Gleason even helped the band sneak into George Lucas' Skywalker Ranch where they recorded some songs. It would be Third Eye Blind's demos of How's It Gonna Be and Slow Motion that caught the attention of recording labels including Dave Massey of Epic Records who would meet with the band. And by the end of that meeting, Stephen Jenkins had secured an opening slot for Oasis who were playing San Francisco that same week. Jenkins would reflect on that meeting saying, I think he liked my directness. He wasn't threatened by it the same way some people were. Now the opening slot for Oasis was a dream come true. Third Eye Blind had become used to playing for dozens of people, but they were now playing to thousands of people, opening for one of the world's biggest rock bands. And following the opening slot for Oasis, a bidding war ensued from record labels, and the band would end up signing with Elektra Records, and it would prove to be one of the biggest deals for any unsigned bands at that point in time. Now from the moment Third Eye Blind hit, they were inescapable. The band's debut album would produce three huge singles with Sammy Charm Life, Jumper, and How's It Gonna Be, in addition to two other well-known songs from the band's catalog, including Graduate and Losing a Whole Year. Now those songs would be played to death on radio and television even to this day, and the band at the end of the day would sell 6 million copies of their debut album just in the US alone, and they also got a highly coveted guest spot on Saturday Night Live. Now what separated Third Eye Blind from their peers was that they were singing about some pretty dark stuff. It would probably help that frontman Stephen Jenkins was obsessed with Lou Reed and the Velvet Underground. And their debut album was filled with lyrics about drug addiction, abuse, and suicide, as exemplified in the songs Semi Charm Life and Jumper. But these tracks were packaged with catchy hooks, an up tempo feel, and poppy choruses. And the lyrical matter did little to dissuade radio stations from not playing their tunes. Now, 1999 was a big year for the band as they released their sophomore effort, Blue, and it was the same year that a new teenage comedy named American Pie would license Semi Charm Life adding some extra legs to an already huge hit. And the previous year, another teenage comedy named Can't Hardly Wait also licensed the song Graduate. Now the band's sophomore record, Blue, didn't sell as well as their debut record, but by 2003, the album sold about 1.5 million copies and produced the top 40 hit Never Let You Go and Deep Inside of You, which would peak at number 69 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Now during the promotional cycle for Blue, the band also underwent some turbulent times resulting in the departure of founding member and guitarist Kevin Cadigan in 2000 following a concert. Now Cadigan had an important part in writing some of the band's biggest hits, and Cadigan believed the band was an equal partnership and would turn around and sue the group, claiming wrongful termination and claiming that his royalties were being withheld once he departed the group. His case would eventually be settled in 2002. Now following the promotional cycle for Blue, the band took some time off as Stephen Jenkins dealt with his mother's breast cancer diagnosis 
and the band played a few benefit shows. By 2002, the band started to work on their third record with Out of the Vein, and the album initially charted well on the Billboard charts, peaking at number 12, but soon lost steam and failed to match the success of their past works. And the problem was that the album didn't really have any successful singles, and only made one music video for the single Blinded, but also hampering the band was record label problems. It was around this time that the album was being released that Elektra Records had merged with Atlantic, and the band seemed to get lost in the shuffle. Frontman Steven Jenkins looked back at this point in the band's career, saying, Our record company ceased to exist, and the month the record was released, Elektra Records imploded. Now, by 2007, the album would sell about half a million copies, and following the underwhelming performance of Out of the Vein, the band was dropped from their label. Now, the band was eager to start working on a follow up album, but Jenkins was suffering from writer's block, so to tide over fans, they would release a greatest hits compilation in 2006 and the band once again hit the road. And it was during that time that longtime bassist Orion Salazar left the group. Abe Millett of the group Inviolet Road joined Third Eye Blind as Salazar's replacement, but he wasn't added as a permanent member in case Salazar decided to rejoin. And in 2008, the band released a digital EP titled Red Star that barely made an impact, but it would be the following year that the band released their first full-length studio album in six years with Ursa Major on their own label, Mega Collider Records. Now the album would be the highest charting record of the band's career, peaking at number 3 on the Billboard charts, and the song Can You Take Me would also appear in Guitar Hero Warriors of Rock as downloadable content. The album received generally favorable reviews, although the record saw a sharp drop to number 45 on the album charts in its second week out. And the band once again hit trouble in 2011 when longtime guitarist Tony Fredinelli was abruptly fired from the group. He would turn around and sue the group and frontman Steven Jenkins for $8 million, claiming he'd been denied songwriting credits and other benefits he alleged he was owed. He would have his day in court and a California jury awarded the guitarist almost $450,000 plus songwriting royalties. And it was during 2010 that the band looked at their follow-up record to Ursa Major titled Ursa Minor that would have contained leftover tracks from the Ursa Major sessions, but the record never ended up seeing a release. Rather than save the material for a future record, the band focused on writing material from scratch, and in 2012 the band did release a free downloadable song to support the Occupy Wall Street movement called If There Ever Was a Time. In 2015 the band released another full-length studio record named Dopamine, and Dopamine would peak at number 13 on the Billboard album charts. And over the past several years, the band has released several more EPs and most recently released their 2019 album Scream along with touring. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to the like button and subscribe. And let me know what your thoughts are on Third Eye Blind and what your memories are of their first record back in 1997. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. And if you guys have suggestions for future stories, let me know in the comment section below. Take care.